Alright guys, so today what we're going to be doing is changing the neutral safety switch on a GM 5L40E that's found on a BMW E46 3 Series, more specifically a 330CI ZHP. This is a 2006 model. You can find these probably scattered throughout the E46 range and other models uh, outside of the 3 Series. Uh, the best way to find out what you have is to look at the little sticker placard that should be stamped or um, welded on to the uh, housing of the transmission. That's the only way. Um, you could have a ZF, you could have a GM. The only way to know though, like I said, is to confirm. Sometimes you can easily tell from the oil pan. Uh, I believe the ZF is typically more of a silver uh, finished oil pan and it has multiple ribs versus the GM one being smooth, but I can't promise that's the case on all of them. That being said, the symptoms I'm facing right now are when I put the car or when I put the key in the car and I go to start it, uh, it does not allow me to start the vehicle. What happens is I am stuck in what shows as S. When it's in S, as in S mode, it seems to think, the vehicle seems to think that it is in gear, which is thus not allowing me to start the car. So. I did read the codes. The transmission module said that there was a failure in the transmission switch. This seems to be what that culprit would be. So in order to do that, we need to drop the pan, take out the filter, take out the valve body, and replace the neutral safety switch. So I hope I can show that to you guys in clear direction, and hopefully this helps someone out because I don't believe there's much out there right now for this. We're going to want to loosen the fill plug first to ensure that we can obviously refill the transmission when we're done with this. Then we'll remove the drain plug after. Um, be, uh, be careful, there will be fluid coming out of here even though the car has been sitting. So I advise you guys to have something ready to catch the fluid that's about to come out. It's a T45, it's a very tight fit. So what I have here is a half cut T45 bit on a mini ratcheting wrench. Um, it's a lifesaver. I can't say that I might have enough torque here, but I'll try. All right, I broke it loose. Felt like I broke it, but I just broke it loose. Now, Try not to make a mess, because I'm guaranteed to make a mess. I have the world's biggest oil pan here. I'm just going to slide it into place. And we're going to hope for the best. This is where you wish you had a lift. quite manageable. Definitely dirty. Uh, since I've owned this car for the last 10 years, uh, I have not changed the transmission fluid. So Hopefully it's been done once before. It looks like it has based on the um, marks that are on the drain plug. That being said, we're going to have to change it regardless, so here we are. While that's slowly going, we can now loosen the drain. This is a T40. Pretty explosive uh, fastening here. Both times I thought I snapped it off, but it's uh, just on there for a while.
Hopefully we don't cut it close on my uh, smaller drain pan. It uh, holds 11 quarts, which is, should be more than enough, but uh, you never know. It's going to go right to the top there. It's not horribly dirty either, which is surprising. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, it's dark, but it's not charred or anything. It's just well-used transmission fluid. There's an O-ring here that's stuck. Don't forget to uh, drop it in the oil with it. Just kidding. Don't forget to leave. Don't forget to not leave the O-ring that may have stayed behind. Probably there's going to be one over there too, but I'm going to wait for it to stop dripping. Okay, with the pan draining almost done here, uh, we're going to remove the pan bolts. So there's a bunch of them. We're just going to go around and uh, slowly remove them. I would recommend that you leave at least one or two in there until you're ready to dump because there's still going to be some fluid in here and I'm going to do my best to not get one drip down anywhere and I'm going to get it right into this pan. So uh, let's get going. So there's two bolts left. They're still threaded in but loosened. And we're just going to have to gently start prying this guy off. And uh, like I said, my goal here is not to make a mess, so let's see if I can. Well, I had an epic fail. Um, the one thing I said that wasn't going to happen ended up happening. Um, first things first, because my car has been sitting for so long, everything was very cold. I took a heat gun and I just went to the perimeter of where all the bolts were and I heated them up and then I uh, shoved in a very very skinny thin um, uh, metal upholstery um, pry bar um, I'll post the link in the description if you guys need it um, that allowed me to just get in where there's some flat spots on the transmission and I just gently pried I wasn't recording because I was just trying to see if what I did worked and uh, it worked pretty damn good because it literally popped off had I not put that bolt or left that bolt in place um, it would have gone all over the place but um, I do have this um, massive oil pan here with some pig mat underneath so thankfully it didn't get on my floor but uh, the bed of me containing everything was a epic fail so oh well uh, in the meantime I'm just gonna let this continue to drip since at this point I've committed to the mess inside this drain pan and um, I'll uh, readjust the camera angle in a little bit once everything has finally started draining. Here's a better angle. Here's the neutral safety switch that I've been mentioning and I will be replacing. Here is a bracket that is going to need to come off. The filter is going to need to come off. There are electrical connectors throughout that need to come off as well and we need to be extra, extra careful when we're removing those and uh, the valve body is going to need to come off. Park. Okay. Reverse. Okay. Neutral. Okay. Drive. Okay, put it back in park. Okay, filter's off. Here's the O-rings. Just be gentle and swing it around and you'll eventually get it off. You can get a pretty good idea of what the trans looks like now with that filter off. Again, here is the neutral safety switch. All of these things here are what are interacting with the shifter inside. You can see all the connectors that are going to need to be removed. take extra care when removing. I'm going to take a heat gun to these and just gently warm them up to at least help in one removal and to just kind of saturate the material a little bit with heat. On the outside of the transmission there's going to be a 13 millimeter bolt that goes right in line with the neutral safety switch and the shaft that's running right through it. 
it's right up here. So put your 13 millimeter on that nut, get your ratchet on. Hold this in place and just loosen that nut. Next, let's take off these two 10 millimeter nuts. Remember that this lines up inside of the neutral safety switch right here. So do not forget that. gently, and I mean gently, pull on the ear and yank down. Do not force it, just feel. And as I'm saying that, I already broke one. So that just tells you right there how sensitive this is. Well, there were some casualties. Um, honestly, I couldn't find the wiring harness to replace this with. Uh, it all comes out from here. Uh, if you guys can find one, please replace it. Uh, in my case, I'm going to wing it and hope for the best that these uh, stay in place. We'll see what we, we'll see what we can do. Next, you are going to want to take your external Torx number 8 and remove only the external Torx fasteners. There should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight fasteners. These two in the middle that are actual torques, leave those alone. Just double check all of them are the same length. I believe they all are. You're going to enjoy a nice little oil bath too while you're doing this. So. Be prepared for that. All the electrical connectors are removed. There's only one, two Torx bolts, external Torx bolts that I have not removed, and then this valve body will drop. This pin aligns right here in between these two and the neutral safety switch aligns right here. So in order to remove the neutral safety switch from here there's going to be two two pins. One pin here and the other one right there. We're going to need to push those out with a punch and then that should allow this shaft here 
to uh, move freely side to side so we can get it out. And then there's that nut right there, that 13 millimeter nut. That should also help for a little bit more um, leverage and movement. All right, so we removed this component here off of that shaft. Internally, the pins have been removed. And now you can see the free movement of the shaft. And now we should be able to slide everything out. So here it is, the neutral safety switch. It's got a GM part on it and everything. Really hope this is the culprit. While we're at it, here is the O-ring, gasket, whatever you want to call it. Um, it is literally hard as a rock I'm trying to squeeze this. It is not compliant at all. I believe over time I've seen it weep from here. So we'll be replacing this as well. Put the new sensor in place. Now move the shaft through to retain both pieces. Put the first dowel pin in on the outer side to limit the travel of the shaft. Grab your center punch. Drive it in. First dowel's in. The rod is in place. And I just moved it. Push up on this piece right here to adjust the positioning of the rod. Trace with your right thumb here, just push upwards to the top of the car. There's this little rod right here. This is gonna move. And then there's a little plunger shoulder piece that's gonna click right over this and lock into the first position. Right there. So this tooth here, should match this first tooth and they should be in line with your rod right there. This tooth should kind of be in the middle of these two threaded uh, holes right here. That's kind of been my identifier. Next what we're going to want to do is get the other dowel. And this one's going to be actually before we put the other dowel in Let's put the gasket in. Here's the gasket with the special tool. I don't really see what's so special about the tool. I think it sucks, but I think it's more to center it than anything. Now that it's centered, it's still kind of crooked. Put 
push that into place to get a nice seal. Now switch to your center punch and drive it home. Feel for the other side of the shaft to make sure it's holding it good. We made it through both sides. All right, so we started the first two bolts. That should hold the valve body in place. We aligned this uh, rod here with this guide and it's in place. We tightened these guys up here. The new seal is in place. All the connectors are now gonna go in right after I fasten all these uh, bolts in place. Go ahead. Okay. Intro. Reverse. Park. One more time. Reverse. Neutral. Drive. Here are some helpful notes uh, in, in assembling the transmission. More specifically, the valve body torquing sequence. It's not random or sequential. There is a specific order. So I'm going to be following that. You're going to want to torque these down to 11 newton meters and uh, that should pretty much be the max don't don't try and over torque and over torque these they're they're simply there to hold things in place do not tighten the crap out of these or otherwise you're going to be in a world of pain okay so all of the bolts have been torqued the external torques and the two 10 millimeters up there in the rod. Um, follow the sequence that I have shown and it's just very, very gentle torquing. So uh, if you don't have a torque wrench that goes that low, um, honestly just go by feel and don't go past what feels tight to your hand. Next, we're gonna wanna put all the connectors back in place. Um, it's a little bit cold here, even though I have the heat on. I'm going to heat up all of my connectors.
So unfortunately we had one casualty putting on the clips. Uh, that's why it's essential to heat these connectors up. I didn't heat it up enough um, and it snapped off. It seems like it's quite tight in place though and it's uh, pointing down so I don't really ever see it dislodging. It still has a pretty good friction fit. Um, at this point I couldn't find any uh, wiring harnesses anyway so I don't really have much of a choice here. I need to get this car running. What you're going to want to do, in my case at least, was that my fuse number 30 kept blowing. Um, I replaced a few times before I uh, tackled this job and every time I'd start the ignition it would blow the fuse. So um, that's kind of what led me down this neutral safety switch. That being said, fuse number 30 uh, is in uh, a few places in, re in regards to what it controls. Definitely has some engine tr and transmission um, relatability. So. What you're going to have to do is go in here. You can see where number 30 is. Just below there is going to be a 7.5 amp fuse. And we're going to install it. Battery is this connector right now. I want to eliminate all possibility of uh, affecting this before I get uh, finished with the transmission. Push straight up right here to make sure that the filter is sitting in nicely. The white plastic limiter will be there. The two other O-rings need to seat in well to get a good seal. Torque the pan bolts to 11 newton meters. I chose to get new drain and fill plugs. You don't have to, but uh, there is an O ring on the back side, um, and I don't know. I don't know the condition of it and I don't want to figure it out either so uh, for a few bucks each might as well just get new ones. We're going to leave the fill open obviously because we need to fill. You don't want to torque this down to 18 newton meters. Now the fill goes right here but obviously like I said we're going to have to fill but it's a T45 and you have little to no room here so uh, definitely try and take care here uh, I probably won't be able to fit my torque wrench but I have a feeling uh, how much this takes this also takes 18 newton meters but uh, just you know get a feel for it with your fill attachment in my case this one fits good enough release the lever Continue to pump the fluid in. Keep pumping with a cold engine until fluid flows out of the drain plug or of the fill plug. Shut the fluid off. Button up, button up the bolt, and then we're gonna start the car and warm it up. So we just turned it off because my bottle ran out of fluid. I'm gonna refill it up, and we're gonna continue to pump until fluid comes out. Looks like we're pretty close though. Alright, we're slowly starting to get a drip. 
Let's just make sure they work good. Yep. So we're going to close the valve. That means we have sufficient fluid for the first phase of filling. So we've filled on a cold. Obviously the level is going to be right in line with the bottom of that plug. So what we're going to do now is plug this thing up. Once we plug this up, just torque it lightly. It does not need to be tight, super tight, like I said. Okay, so now what we're going to do is follow the directions. I pulled these from the Bentley manual. Basically, uh, what we're going to do is warm up the engine. We're going to reach a certain operating temperature here. It's between 30 to 50 degrees Celsius or 85 to 120. Uh, the best way to monitor this is through the onboard diagnostics, not the actual pan temperature. Um, if you don't have a means of doing that, um, the best way to do it is just touch the pan and make sure it's warm to the touch. You can leave your hand there but not burn it. Um, if it's more than that, you've gone too high. Um, so basically what we're going to do is once we are at the minimum of 30 Celsius, the, uh, the plug can be released, the, the fill plug. And then we're just going to continue to add fluid until it drops from the fill hole. So what, what happens is, is when we're going to start this car, the transmission is going to absorb whatever is currently in the pan that we just filled. It's going to cycle through and what it's going to do is then drop or in this case suck up level which will then leave less fluid in the pan. So that's why when it's running and at the correct temperature you want to fill with it with you want to fill some more in there. So like I said there's a there's a there's a band here of 30 to 50 degrees Celsius which hopefully we can monitor on the onboard diagnostics. Okay so we're monitoring the transmission temperature right now. Uh, I have it data logged. I just started the car up right now. It's in park. It's at 17 degrees Celsius and we need to be in the range of 30 to 50 degrees Celsius before we can uh, continue to fill this transmission. If you don't have access to an onboard diagnostic that can read temperature, you can always get an infrared gun and measure it as well. Right now I'm reading at roughly about 18 degrees Celsius which is actually pretty in line with what I'm picking up on the diagnostic reader. So it's another thing you can use if you need it. I have my fluid ready to go. Uh, I've put roughly about almost one, uh, one full bottle of transmission fluid, which was roughly four quarts, um, just a hair shy. This one is probably about another three quarts in here. And I'm ready to fill once I hit my operating temperature of at least 30 degrees Celsius but I cannot exceed 50 degrees Celsius. Okay. Okay. Okay, turn the engine off. So we've hit 30 degrees Celsius. We're gonna pop the fill plug and fill until we have transmission fluid pour out again. Okay, so now that we're at 30 degrees, we're going to pour this back in, like so. We're going to continue filling. Put it in accessory. Okay. Can you put your foot on the brake and go to neutral? Okay, start the car. Click, is that okay? What? I heard a little click. That's fine, I'm sure it's fine. We're 
above 30 degrees Celsius right now and we are filling the transmission up. Just got to keep the pressure going. As you can see we're at 33 degrees Celsius. I'm going to just continue to fill here until fluid continues to pour. If you exceed 50 degrees Celsius, stop, let the transmission cool and continue again. Okay, we've finally hit the top there where it's starting to spill out. So that means we've hit the appropriate level. Alright, so that wraps it up. Uh, the filling of the transmission occurred in two stages. The first one was in a cold fill. So we just pop the fill plug right over there. Fill it until fluid comes out cold without the run engine running. Then we plug up the hole, we start the car, and we let it reach 30 degrees Celsius. Between the 30 and 50 degrees Celsius mark, you're able to pop that fill plug again and continue adding fluid. At that point, you continue to add fluid until the fluid starts to weep out of the fill hole, and that's the appropriate level. Now, if you have done all of those things, you should be good to go. If you exceed 50 degrees Celsius, you're gonna have to shut the engine off, plug the hole up, and wait until it drops back down to be in that 30 to 50 degree range mark. It's very important that you're there. Uh, beyond that, um, for this vehicle, I just have to put the uh, center brace and the under tray, and we are done. The uh, problem has been addressed in my case. The neutral safety switch was the culprit, um, which was immobilizing my vehicle from starting did not even allow a crank. Uh, it started off with the vehicle um, throwing a limp mode gear icon where it would normally show drive. I was able to make it home, park the car. When I let it cool off and tried to start it though, it showed S where it would normally show park or drive. Um, when you would try to start the car, unfortunately, um, it would not let you because the car thought that it was in a gear, which it wasn't, and because it thought it was in a gear, it would not let you start it. Hence why it's called the neutral safety switch. Um, you can only start the car in park or neutral. That being said, um, I'm just going to take the car for a drive around the block, make sure it shifts through all the gears, and we should be okay. Um, this is definitely not a job for the novice. Uh, but it's definitely um, doable. There uh, were a couple scenarios where I felt like um, I needed to really test my patience, especially with the connectors being so brittle. Um, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you uh, use a heat gun to heat those up. Um, otherwise, it's frankly not that bad. This selector rod here gave me a little bit of trouble when I was taking out the pins and the dowel pins. Uh, but uh, for the most part, you should be okay. It's, it's. Uh, I don't want to say straightforward, but it is decently straightforward. It's just very time consuming, especially if you're doing this for your first time. So good luck to everyone, and I hope this helps.